What's up guys, I'm alive. I did not die of liver failure last night, but I do feel a little woozy. We're here at uh, Valterra, which seems to be a steakhouse. Honestly, I must have been looking at restaurants on Google Maps for like half an hour on my phone. Yesterday, I didn't see something I wanted for lunch. And then I looked at this real quick this morning. I saw grilled artichokes on the appetizer menu. That was good enough for me. So, uh, and it's not too far. It's only like 10 minute Uber, so we're here. Really nice restaurant. I'm surprised no one's ever busted my balls for having my phone out and filming a vlog, but this might be the first time we might get unlucky this week. So that Coca-Cola messed me, actually messed me up yesterday, kind of. I honestly, you know what I think it was? I think it's because I had the, the French fries for lunch and the, then the fried chips for dinner. I gotta just, no fried food, I can't do it. I can't do it. Uh, it's really, the, the special the rolls are so bad. Usually I'll only get beer if I see something I really think I'm gonna like or if they have cider. I kinda like cider, but not everyone has it. So we're probably just gonna go with the, the New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc again because it's like a safe bet for what I like. Uh, or Oregon Pinot Noir, oh, you guys can't see it. Oregon Pinot Noirs, sometimes I like too. Uh, this other stuff, like, I don't know enough about Italian and Spanish wines. I know I don't really like Cab that much. Sometimes Bordeaux's are good if they're Merlot. Like, I like the Merlot Bordeaux's. And they got some expensive stuff. Oh, this is like, this is really special. $800 glass, DRC, Romani Conti. I don't know. Or, you know, instead of me trying to finagle this, I can actually ask the waiter or sommelier which red wine has the most fruit. <laughs> so I was like a little out of it when I got up at 6 a.m. Um, I just hydrated and then uh, I went back to bed. I laid in bed until like 11 basically after working for an hour from like 6.30 to 7.30. Uh, and for breakfast I had like five jars of pear baby food and an apple. So I just had, I was like just carbs easy on the stomach. I had some like B1 and Masticum with it. So I'm not actually that hungry now, so I think it'll be okay. Like I don't have to stuff myself with anything. All right, so we ended up ordering the Sauvignon Blanc. Um, for lunch, we ordered, I'm like shaking this whole table. It's a little off. You guys see it shaking? They need to put uh, some cardboard under one of the legs. Um, that's something like, when I used to work at Del Frisco Steakhouse in New York, I was only there for a little while, but it's like part of the side work. Like, polish your wine glasses, you check your table, da, 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 but they, they ran a really tight ship. That job I had at Del Frisco's, that was like the most regimented and cultured place. It was just like, you had to be nuts to work there. And I was able to do it just fine, but most other restaurants are way different, way, way, more, way easier, way different. We didn't use a POS system. Like we had to, everything was by hand, which is crazy. Um, but we got ahi tuna poke as one appetizer. Just some plain tuna, some omega-3, that's what I wanted. Um, we got the plain grilled artichokes. And then for lunch, we got steak sandwich, plain, nothing. I got fries on the side, but I'm not gonna eat them. I'll, I'll feel better without them. They didn't have any, like, they didn't have roast potatoes, they didn't have mashed potatoes for lunch, only dinner. So, and there was like, there's like a lot of stuff that goes on the steak sandwich. It was nothing I want to eat though. It was like goat cheese, tomato, some greens, pickles. I mean, maybe I could have put the pickled shallot on there and the, definitely not the steak sauce though. The only thing I'll usually get on a, is like if they have onions. So maybe I should have got the burger, but the burger bun is usually has eggs and milk and it's really heavy, which I don't like. Our artichoke's probably gonna be plain. Sometimes artichokes, like, especially fresh. Like, you're supposed to dip in the aioli or whatever they give you, because if not, it's kind of like... But whatever, we should we should feel... Uh, probably shouldn't be drinking more, but... We should feel good enough, and then we'll... we worry about dinner later. Oh, it's probably gonna be like fucking $150 lunch, so... Go figure. No, this place is... I don't want to like hold my phone up and stuff, but very nice restaurant. I forgot the name of it. Baltair. Baltair. Yeah. So Friday, 
Friday afternoon. This is cool. First uh, low mineral water I've had in a restaurant. I mean, I drink like Fuji low mineral water all the time myself. What does that say on there? It's from New Hampshire, Hilton, LTD Hampshire. No, that's this looks British, right? I was gonna say it looks like a like British logo. Hilton sounds British. It's from Wild at Hilton Mineral Aquifer Source, England. I'm gonna start talking like a proper chap. Hold on, bro. I just drank some English. I just drank some English water. I'm ready. <laughs> Is it? There's a joke that like people get stabbed a lot in England and stuff, or in London, like shanks. Like everyone has a knife and they're trying to shank you. Okay, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna do more than one glass of wine for lunch, but bro, it's it's, it's melon, dude. I'm just happy because I can actually taste something for once in one. Bro, the thing is, like, California, like, everyone's so weight, weight and health conscious. Like, they want all their wines to be really dry and, like, tannic and stuff. But this is nice. It's, still, it's dry, but there's a lot of melon flavor. Even just, like, that's why I like the Riesling, because just that little residual sweetness it really cuts through it it makes it a lot nicer all right ladies and gentlemen we got some grilled artichokes not what i expected i'm guessing what they do is like they take the leaves out and dip them in the aioli which takes forever yeah bro i am not down for this today i'm just gonna like these are grilled too they're not like steamed so a little drier. It's good. I think they um I think they brine them before cooking them. Very good. Seasoned with salt and herbs. All the way. Yeah, yeah. Tuna came too. So, we have these like jarred artichokes on Frankie Shure Range Foods. It's just the artichoke heart. If you guys aren't familiar with artichokes, this little part in here. That's like the edible part, that's what we sell. And usually on on like the end of the leaves, like this little part is edible. But it's like such a tiny part, like you'll be here all day eating this. But guys, I'm I'm like I thought I'd come here and I'd be like hungry, but I'm, I'm not. I don't really feel like, you know, like picking through all these leaves, but mainly because I'm just not that hungry. Basically, I'm here for you guys. I think I said it last night, who knows when I'm gonna, you got to do another restaurant review. Well, not really restaurant review, more like me yapping while eating. Yeah, this is why I like the artichoke hearts so much that we have because it's no work. This is like very tedious. Maybe, we, we, so we had one of the, like kind of had one of the three artichokes. We'll probably pick at it some more. Here we have a tuna poke. I didn't know this came with avocado. Might not have gotten it, but I'm not gonna eat the avocado anyway. And then we have some some bread here, which I don't think is fried. 
I really don't think this is fried. Yeah, it can't be. It can't be. Probably not. You guys see this well enough? It's very classic. Cilantro on top, which I don't really like. A lot of green onion mixed in. Probably cilantro mixed in too. Soy sauce in there, sesame. Uh, actually, macadamia nuts chopped up. Little Hawaiian twist on it. I kind of just wanted to to pick out the tuna pieces, you know, and just have some omega three. It's good. It's nice and plain. These aren't, um, these aren't plain, there's like some herb in there. I feel like this would be easier to do with my hands, too. Sometimes tuna isn't that bad. Um, the fatty tuna, like the toro, some, a lot of times the toxins are stored in the fat more. Sometimes that can be pretty bad. Well, the, the dish was called tuna poke. And usually poke is like, it's like almost all tuna meat. I didn't expect like this much green in here. And this is the reason I don't order these dishes a lot, is because like, I think it's ponzu or, um, or some type of citrus in here. I really don't like citrus or fish. Like some lemon on a Dover sole, that's fine. But like raw fish with like Meyer lemon or like ponzu or I feel like it needs like, like I'd rather just have soy sauce or something sweeter, which is too acidic. Oh. We should probably take our, um, take our vitamins. I'm just doing basic stuff. We got, um, Good, yeah, it's good. Good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Just some mastic, um, mastic B1. I took some zinc for, I took some zinc with the fruit. Maybe I shouldn't have taken it earlier. Honestly, I, I kind of wanted to go to um, the other French restaurant to get some bread and butter again, fresh bread, which I like a lot, but it's like a, tw it's like a 25 minute Uber. So I don't really want to sit in the car that long. Yeah, I really don't like, um, it's okay, but Dude, the green too. I hate cilantro. I hate it. I it. All right. I've had enough of this. Oh, that's blocking the camera for you guys. Maybe like half of it. Mostly the tuna. But um, I'll just have some more of the artichokes. And then Oh. 
have some more of this and then um, have a steak sandwich. So art artichokes are just a good source of soluble fiber, which is good for detoxing the liver, but a little tedious. And not all of it is edible. It's a lot easier to eat with your hands than uh, trying to get a fork and knife out of it. Oh, a butter knife cannot go through an artichoke. Yeah. Like corn on the cob, bro. Yeah, well done, thank you. It's funny because I was saying I saw artichoke and that was good enough for me, but then the artichoke's the only thing on the menu I actually want, go figure. Yeah, so I actually actually peeled most of the leaves away from this. You can see this in here, the artichoke part. That's what we sell on um, on the foods website, as I said. But let me let me peel the ray the rest of the rest of these leaves and show you. This is like a quarter of a heart. So imagine like, you know, you have the whole thing. And this, this is the main edible piece. It's like the only edible piece on the whole thing. The stem is okay, but it's not really. So I'm paying, I think those other shows are like 20 bucks. Not organic. Three three whole artichokes. The jar of artichokes is like I think the jar is like fifteen bucks we have, and there's like there's got to be like ten hearts in there, ten artichoke hearts. So the fact that we have that product at that price and it's organic is like when you see what an actual artichoke is, it's like crazy. I don't really drink this at all. All right, now we'll just have some bread and steak, maybe dessert. But this is why you guys need to, uh, you guys need to support me. So I'll open up our own New York restaurant with tables that don't shake. No, I mean, after I have, once I get the farm and stuff and I'm doing all my own products and I have more quality control, then I would like really want to do a restaurant using the farm product. Like on one hand, on one hand, I want to do. On one hand, I just want to do like an organic place that's not too expensive. Well, it's going to be expensive because all the food's organic, but like more casual, you know. Like, not even really sit down, you know. Like, just somewhere you can get decent organic food. But on the other hand, I want to do like uh, an actual sit-down restaurant where you have. Um, Where you have like more uh, technique in the dishes because like if I do an organic restaurant which is high quality ingredients and it's just like basic stuff like oh you can get your organic rice or organic potatoes or just, just like simple plain food whereas then when you get to the restaurant then when you're like really transforming the ingredients then it's a whole different story I didn't sleep that well last night. Um, the night before, I think I told you guys, I slept okay, like six hours straight and then I was up, but I was in and out of sleep for, for like six hours, got up at 6 a.m. again. I told you guys, but I don't know why I didn't sleep. I think, um, oh, he got me the, I was making a joke because like the water's from London 
And, yeah. and you know how they always like joke how people in London get stabbed a lot? Yeah. I was, <laughs> I was just joking. No, I thought it was, I thought it was funny. I thought it was oh, funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good water though, right? No, it's it's hard to find a lot. Of, it's hard to find low mineral water. Right. Yeah. yeah. Not kind of. Well, everybody loves it here. Yeah, yeah. Six coming up, but okay. Thank you. Yeah. It's like kind of a ghetto joke to make, right? Fucking getting stabbed from London water. You're like, London water in a steakhouse, is that not like an obvious joke, dude? Is it not an obvious joke to make with like steak knives and stuff? It's so stupid. Only, only five-year-olds like my sense of humor. So, I don't know what we're gonna do. It'll probably be like three o'clock, 3.30 by the time we get back. I, I want to film a fourth. I want to do four vlogs total. So I, I really want to film again tonight. Our flight, we have to leave at like four in the morning, I think. I might have to leave earlier than that, actually. The, the, the boarding for the flight is at like 5 a.m. So probably leave it for maybe 3.45 or something. So when we come home from the the restaurant tonight worry about that later but we're definitely not going to get a whole night sleep I felt crappy but the B, the B vitamins in the wine are making me feel better <laughs> bro I don't think mine even has B vitamins I think it's just beer I think it's beer yeah I might be wrong on that well, it's Friday night, so I'm guessing whatever restaurant I go to is going to be really busy, which is why I wanted to like time it so like I went in the last hour of the restaurant's kitchen hours, because if the kitchen closes at 10, you figure, hey, if I get there at 9 o'clock by myself, one person, they'll take me and... It's not gonna be too crazy busy. But then I mean I get home later, but I don't think I'm gonna be hungry until I don't think I'm gonna be hungry at all. So we'll have to pick a spot that's um I just don't wanna have to sit in the Uber too long. Cause the, the place I'm staying at on the map is like next to the Getty. Which again, it's not, it's not that far, but as most of the restaurants are like half an hour Uber, so I wonder what my Uber bill has been since I've been here. Spending like a hundred bucks a day, I should have probably. I mean, I could have rented a car, but then like finding parking, parking and stuff seems not too fun over here. This is like a, a steak crostini. I think I'm missing some bread. Can you call this a sandwich? Did they forget to put the slice of bread on top? Oh, we can't have the fries. The steak sauce looks good, but I just don't want any extra fat or butter. This already looks like a really fatty ribeye. I don't think it's ribeye though. The, I think it's hanger steak. I forgot what it was. Could be ribeye. Bro, I'm such an idiot. It was bound to happen, but I forgot to hit the record button once. You guys even see the food that I show you the food? I was basically saying people in California are afraid of bread. I feel like I'm missing a piece of bread, but it's good. Plenty of salt. Chef got a nice temperature on the steak. You know, he did medium rare, right? Bread's fresh. Bread is very good. And I think it's just, I think it's one slice of bread because I think they do this like, uh, I think they put a lot of stuff on top of it normally. But it's a little weird when you have to eat a steak sandwich with a pork and bread. Now then you guys miss like five minutes of yapping. I was saying like, I don't know what I'm gonna do later. 
Like, I feel like I should go for a walk or try to exercise or something a little bit, but. I'm gonna have a few hours. I don't know why I'm so full though. Like, I guess I didn't digest um, everything from last night too. So, just give me five of these, bro. Five pieces of bread with meat juice on them. Good, yeah. Good stuff? I'm a little weird with my uh, <laughs> diet <and> stuff. <laughs> You're all good, man. Got you. We, we will accommodate to the best of our ability. You know what I mean? All right, dude. I'm worried I'm not going to be hungry later, too. I don't want to take kefir grains again because I'm. it's possible that the histamine and the kefir grains are why I didn't sleep. So that, that's a risk. That's a That'd be another risky thing to take, but it would definitely help that just food. All right, well, we'll see if they have dessert because the candida that's detoxing my liver and my stomach would love it. I probably should just said, I don't, just to not give me fries or anything because I, I didn't touch them. Was I talking about my flight in that clip? That's a problem, dude. I, I forget to hit record once and it throws me off track because I don't remember what I said. Because there's like, there's probably like 15 to 20 different clips for this restaurant vlog, maybe even more. So it's hard for me to remember what's in what clip. When I get back, I'm more worried. Like I'm hoping like I, maybe I should sleep deprive myself so I can actually fall asleep on the plane. Oh, dude. The flight back from LA the first time a few months ago was, um... Anything else there, Coffee you got, or anything? Do you have dessert menu? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Want me to wrap this up? No, 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 I'm good. good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, when I was coming home from the surgery, screaming baby in my ear on the flight horrible horrible but this was first class first class people paying like two thousand each way i think something crazy maybe it wasn't that much but it was a lot but it was like shrieking like horror movie shrieking baby the whole way home and then on the way here well that baby was so loud i wasn't that close to her like but she was somewhere in the same section, like on the plane, so maybe 10, 15 feet away. So it was so loud still. Now on the way here, I was right next to, I was in like comfort, which is like a reasonably priced first class. So I just had one lady sitting next to me, but then right across from me in the next, in the middle aisle, I was on the left. There was a fucking couple with a baby crying most of the time. Maybe half the time the baby was crying and it wasn't that loud, but. I was, dude, I just, I honestly want to, I'm going to complain to Delta about it. I'm going to be like, this fucking old lady next to me fucking smelled, and this fuck, no, she did smell a little bit, like old people smell, and then the fucking screaming baby next to me. I don't know how these parents do this shit, bro. I don't know how they, and, and the, the crazy thing is that for the baby to be crying like that is in so much pain, it's like, it's despicable. They should go to wifishilling.com and buy a knapsack for their toddler and they should be fine. But no, I did not have, it was, I was like in and out sleeping for the first three hours of the flight here. But dude, like two hours on a flight seems like time's moving in slow motion. But they had the, the little movie screen in front of me. My luck was, my screen was freezing like every 30 seconds for a little bit, like a lag. And I was looking at other people's screens. I was like, hey, am I the only person with the shitty screen? Is this supposed to happen? And I thought it was the show, but no, it was my screen because I switched shows. But that distracted me. There was like, um, there a lot of movies and shows on there. Um, I ended up watching, I, I went through a few before I found one I liked, which was like some National Geographic stuff of like 
bugs eating each other, which was actually pretty interesting. So they got, well, let me show you the menu. So we got bread pudding, probably too fatty, too much dairy. Chocolate silk pie, definitely no. The problem with um, most dessert is, has a lot of dairy and eggs, both of which I don't eat. Beignets would be good, but it's the problem with the beignets is the fryer oil, and usually I guess there's milk in them. Uh, so if we really want to eat something, we can see what uh, sorbet they have. And r roll the dice with the sorbet, I guess. Chateau Yaquem, $800 bottle there. Yeah, that's the famous sauterne. They don't, oh yeah, they have a cheaper sauterne by the glass, but maybe we'll do that for dinner later. This is a very famous dessert wine, most famous in the world probably. Chateau Yaquem. Bro, it's probably a bad idea to do sorbet, right? Let me see what this one he has. They might not even have sorbet I can eat, so I'll ask them. It's just like, and I've said this before, but back when the USDA raided my business in like summer of last year, I was so sick and stressed, like I could only stomach like carbs and sugar. This is how I feel now. But hopefully like in a few months when I get healthier and like the metals in my body, the levels are reduced, um, like less copper, less zinc and iron and stuff. That should reduce the effects of the EMF. I should feel and sleep a lot better. Uh, what sorbet do you have? Sorbet, we have um, pineapple, mango, mandarin, and coconut. Pineapple is just pineapple? Yeah. Can I just get like three pineapple? Sure. Yeah. Let me give you my, uh, let me give you my card. That's any bets. Thing is 165 is my guess. Looks good. Bye -bye. I got where artichokes didn't really eat them. Or tuna poke didn't really eat it. A half steak sandwich, but I'm just like, I'm just ordering some stuff to try to keep it interesting for you guys. Again, like, who knows when I'm gonna do this again? Because I'm not, I'm not driving two hours to New York, going out to eat, and then driving back for a restaurant vlog, like. Yeah, I don't think I like want. I would. I don't. I don't feel like I'd want to do this again. You know, I mean, for me, this isn't that fun. Like, and I don't think there's a lot of restaurants in LA that I'd actually want to go to. But we could have definitely. I said. I think I said it earlier in this vlog. Like, I could have got more of my money's worth with the flight. But, dude, if I stay a week, dude, I honestly. I've only been, I've only, I'm only, this is two days, guys. Two days worth of restaurant vlogs. If I was, if I had a brain and stayed for a week, well, I mean, I have some stuff. I, I gotta get back to work. I got some business stuff that has to be handled, but um, if I could stay a week, dude, five or six days of me doing restaurant vlogs, two a day, that's 12 vlogs every two weeks, three weeks post them. It'd be good for like half a year, dude. That's what I really should have done. Thanks, Frank. All right, thank you. So we're gonna be right on my man. You all set, bud? Oh, not bad. Oh, well, 133. 133 without tip. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta stop recording to use my calculator. I was close, I guessed 165. It's uh, 160, 33 with tip 160 uh -huh. 160 30 it's good enough for me dude the fucking I don't know the fucking bottle of water was 12 dollars <laughs> artichokes 19 tuna poke 26 didn't have to do that steak sandwich 33 Sauvignon Blanc 18, Sorbet 14. Tax. Bro, why did restaurants tax? Like, you don't, I don't charge tax on Frankie's for his meat. I'm pretty sure for food, you don't legally have to charge tax. Like, there's certain products that legally need to be charged tax on, but. Bro, I'm pretty fucking sure a restaurant isn't supposed to charge tax. Bro, what? That's bullshit. So, to be honest, it should have been like. Yeah. 
We're out of pineapple. Do you want to do mandarin or mango oh. or coconut or raspberry? That's all you have? You don't have yeah. lemon? No. No. So he said they had pineapple, but they don't. So we'll try the coconut. Because the other options are uh, raspberry, mango. And he said something else, but it's too much uh, character or something. I probably would have been a lot happier with the dinner menu here. But that's why, Frank, you're supposed to look at the whole menu instead of just seeing artichokes and being like, oh, that's fine. If they have artichokes, the rest has got to be good, right? It's going to be so much work to edit all these restaurant vlogs. Maybe I should have asked you guys, like, what shit is there to do in L.A. before actually coming out here. Like, I don't like going out and partying and go, or going to clubs or any shit. I don't really like hooking up with strangers. Fucking... I mean, let's be honest, dude. All she... Let's be honest. I'm saying that now, but, like... If, like, a six and a half out of ten invited me over to her place, I'd be like, fuck that's why that's why I don't put myself in those situations Voltaire restaurant pen bro just, I'm, I'm curious like when people when people build these restaurants I'm guessing like construction wise the con the general contractor must take them for a pretty big fucking ride because the difference between and the cost of doing something with like efficiently and good price is probably one third of what a lot of people end up getting charged. And like you guys see in my vlogs, like on the meat business, like I've bought a lot of used restaurant equipment. You know, I'm paying, you know, three or four thousand dollars for things that are like twenty five, thirty thousand. So. Kind of, kind of hard to fathom that people are operating a business that can afford to just bleed, throw money away like that. Like, why in any circumstance, unless even so, like, why in any circumstance would you ever purchase a new skillet for like thirty-five thousand dollars when if you buy a used one, even if it's four or five? How much is it going to cost to fix it? It's probably going to work. So I, I would imagine it might be some type of insurance issue where, um, legally speaking, if they have used equipment and something goes wrong, maybe that's the problem, but I don't know. Maybe they're just ripping so many people off and price gouging and monopolizing people that they have the money they don't care. They just piss it away. Well, Frank, if you didn't spend $60,000 to get your eyes gouged out, you could have bought a new skillet, too. <laughs> You're right. Okay. All right, thank you. No added fat at all. Oh, so it's, a, it's, a, like, a, it's like a, just a regular coconut milk. Yep. They don't add coconut cream or anything. Nope. Yeah. Yep. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, I got you. I hate mint, bro. I'm not a fan of mint. Unless I'm brushing my teeth with it. That's the thing. Mint is for brushing your teeth. I don't know if you guys are proud. So we've got three white balls. Better go to West Hollywood pool parties now, right? That's not that funny of a joke. So I'm guessing if there's no added fat. Like coconut milk, sometimes like light coconut milk, is very, very low in fat. The full fat coconut milk or like coconut cream can be... Um, different ball game which probably so coconut is very healthy but when you have it you just want to have a small amount of the, of a fatty version because it'll really promote the release of bile from the liver and you'll feel like crap if you eat too much from like an inflammatory perspective though it's it's good but i don't like coconut I really don't like coconut, to be honest with you guys. This is good, but 
like, like you guys see me cook, when I cook with coconut oil, I'm using like MCT oil and refined neutral coconut oil. Because I don't actually like the coconut flavor. Sometimes in desserts, it's okay, but like this, this is okay. Like I'm not in love with it, but it's good enough I could probably eat it all. Hey, on the plus side, now that I'm thinking about it, coconut milk sorbet, they might not be using water, which means that there's not, there might not be fluoride in this, since my brain wasn't already fucked up enough. It's like a lemon sorbet, they're gonna be using water in it. And if you definitely, these restaurant chefs, Part of their job is to make money, save as much money as possible. So why would you use bottled water to make a fucking sorbet? This is good though. The, te the texture, the texture is very creamy, not icy at all. Very good. This is like. Honestly, this is probably the healthiest dessert you could get in a restaurant. A coconut sorbet like this, because you know, no commercial eggs, no commercial dairy, no seed oils, fried stuff, no tap four days tap water. All the concerns I usually have about a restaurant dessert are kind of like eliminated with this. Although I feel like this is like a, this copper paella dish. What I don't know what what this was supposed to be used for. Doesn't seem like a typical dessert plate. Bro, I think I'm gonna end up sitting here and eating the sorbet for like half an hour. Check what time it is for you guys real quick. Bro, I, I didn't leave the I left the house at two. I left the house at two. So now it's 315. So technically we're supposed to be getting dinner in like four and a half hours max. Technically. Look, worst case scenario, we just do the same thing. And like nibble at a few dishes that'll have to be uh have to be more precise in figuring out what's in the dish because if, if i was being smart really i would have probably spent 80 90 bucks because i wouldn't have ordered so much stuff that i don't didn't even eat you guys know like i don't like part of me like I don't like doing this. Like, I'm going out to eat in these nice places. And you guys see, I'm not really enjoying it that much. And, like, I know most people can't afford to do that. And, like, me giving that money away last year and always and always being, being generous and stuff, like, I would 100% rather give, you know, that $160 to give 20 bucks to eight different people on the street instead of, you know, instead of doing this. But... At the end of the day, you know, a lot of you guys do enjoy these vlogs, so. I think when I was doing these in New York, out of all my videos, they were getting like, they were getting pretty high views, you know? Both, both my day of eating some restaurant vlogs are what you guys like the most. I just need to convert back to what's it called? How do you say it? I just need to go back to being Jewish and find a nice rich Jewish girl to take care of me. Just have to eat kosher when I'm with her. That might limit 
my culinary experience is unfortunate. I think when I get back, I'll just have some masticum and hydrate a lot. Bro, do pe people must share this because the amount of time it takes to eat three scoops of sorbet is like fucking an hour. I wonder if we can make sorbet. I'm guessing it doesn't stay as well as ice cream in the freezer. But they definitely sell sorbets in the supermarket. We should definitely do some. I should. I just my get my Amish buddies to make a lemon sorbet. See, guys. Hey, look. Maybe I'll make five thousand dollars off lemon sorbet next month, and it's a net positive. You see, I'm wasting all this money at these restaurants, and uh, if I wasn't here eating sorbet right now, I wouldn't have thought of selling sorbet to you guys with glass bottle mineral water and organic ingredients. So, uh, Frankie eyeballs lemon sorbet coming soon. Put some white wine in there. Ooh. We did that recipe. We did that recipe a little while ago. I actually stopped, but there's still a decent amount left. I literally sit here all day eating this, but need to uh, need to digest and uh, need to digest and recoup for dinner. For sure. Yeah, bro. When the bathrooms have. When the bathrooms have restaurants, this, when the restaurant has a bathroom this nice, that's why you know. Cha-ching. All right, ladies and gentlemen, vlog number three is finished. That's the restaurant. There's the street. I don't know what town we're in, but everything in LA seems, ooh, we got some symbolism over here. What does that say? Zumani Nails. Spa. Anyway, uh, everything in California, it seems like, it's like, seems like really nice and approachable. Like when you're in New York, like you feel like you don't want to do stuff, but like, I, I, I feel like going to get my, I feel like I could do it. I feel like I could go get my nails done or some weird shit, even though I would never do it. But the inclination of doing it is higher here seems uh, a lot more approachable like people in New York are just like everyone's focused on kind of what they're doing it's probably still the same out here it's just it seems a lot more relaxed and comfortable but uh, traffic wise it's weird because people say LA traffic's really bad but it's consistent in New York you could be trying to get somewhere at 10 in the mor at, uh, 10 p.m. at night or 3 in the morning and be stuck in traffic. In here, that doesn't seem to really happen. And what and the rush the rush hours in New York are longer. Um, like here, rush hour is consistently from like from five to six or seven. But if you leave at seven thirty, rush hour is over. In New York, rush hour is gonna be until fucking nine nine p.m. You know. Um, so some of the principles are the same, but it seems like the driving's a lot. Uh, if anything, it's and it's an one other big thing that people don't mention is driving out here is infinitely less stressful than New York. All the roads are flat. There's not too many potholes. The highway has seven freaking lanes. You're just cruising. It's so easy to drive here compared to New York. New York, the roads are up and down. There's curves. There's turns. Everything's confusing. People are fucking lunatics. They're super, super crazy. Super crazy, but. I don't know what I'm going to probably just go back to the house, do some work on my computer, and then we'll try to pick a place for it. Bro, but if you want to meet some bad bitches, bro, just go to these fucking... Just go to these fucking bean cafes and stuff, because, like, you're not going to find a girl at a steakhouse or some nice upscale shit unless she's already with her sugar daddy, so it's whatever. Yeah, I'm definitely a dumbass with this Uber stuff, because if I'm spending, like, 100 to 120 bucks a day in Uber, I think the rental car might be way cheaper, plus I don't have to... I'm, I've been sitting. I sit here, wait 10, 15 minutes every time for Ubers. 
so and the Tesla issue too. So I think if if I come out here for, for two two three days, wouldn't I wouldn't rent the car, but longer than that, I think it's worth it. I don't feel too crappy, but just the air quality here is so fucking bad. I don't know why I can't breathe out here compared to New York. <laughs> 